Hi, I'm Bulbasaur. And I'm Squirtle. And this is Pokemon... Bulbasaur, are you excited for E2? Am I excited for what? E2! Oh, come on, don't tell me you've never heard of E2. Sorry, Squirtle, I haven't. The only time I can think of hearing the term E2 is when playing Battleship. I can't believe this. You haven't heard of the biggest gaming event and convention all year? Where companies reveal and show off their big upcoming games and products? It's so fun to watch! What? I have no idea what you're... Wait... Squirtle, do you mean E3? Uh, no. I'm pretty sure it's E2. Squirtle, its full name is the Electronic Entertainment Expo. Three E's. E3. Oh. Well... Pooh. It looks like I'll have to modify my sign. Yeah, you do that. But anyways, today on Pokemon Talk, we have a very special guest. Earlier this year was the five-year anniversary of Twitch Plays Pokemon, the chaotic and insane event that took the Pokemon, Twitch, and internet communities by storm and left a lasting impact on Pokemon culture as a result. And today, we are fortunate enough to have a guest who was heavily involved in the experience, and saying that is an understatement. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Lord Helix. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, friends. Thank you for welcoming me here. Hold on. So this is Lord Helix? Like this is really him? Indeed, child. It is I. I have many questions. Ask away. Well, first off, why are your eyes looking two different directions? One can't really be all seeing if they're only looking straight ahead. Can they? That is... strangely wise. Okay, next question. Why are you an Alma Knight? Didn't Twitch Play's Pokemon finish with you as an Alma Star? Oh, this is merely one of my mortal forms. You see, I am Lord Helix, not Lord Alma Star. I can take the mortal form of any creature that is compatible with my essence. Alma Knight and Alma Star are my most frequent hosts, of course, but occasionally I'll dabble in the form of a Shelmet or a Scavalier. Seriously? Well, I didn't know you took those forms. I have before, yes. I don't prefer them, though. I end up missing my tentacles. It's a good thing we had context for that sentence. Oh, I almost forgot. I can also take the form of a morphed shelter biting onto a Slowbro's tail or Slowking's head. But those are definitely my least favorite. Not only is constantly having a body part in my mouth a relatively unpleasant experience, but I also have no control over my own transportation. I once instructed a Slowbro to travel to Johto. He asked me which way was Johto an entire week later. Can you take the form of Deoxys? Since, you know, he has DNA helix-shaped arms. Well, sometimes? Huh. I had not previously considered that. Well, I can try it next time I travel to the mortal world. I have a feeling Ammonite and Amistar will still be my preferred forms, however. They just feel so natural to me. Plus, like I said, I like my tentacles. In an effort to get you to stop bringing up your tentacles, I wanted to ask you a question about you and Arcus. How does that even work? I actually had a similar question. Most people seem to either worship you, Lord Helix, or Arcus. Does that create some kind of rivalry between you, or do you guys get along? Oh, we actually get along swimmingly. You see, Arcus created the universe, but he doesn't govern it. As you know, many, many years ago, he created everything, and then passed out. When he awoke recently, he actually had no interest in governing the universe that he had created. He was perfectly content to allow me to continue doing that job. Therefore, since there was no conflict of interest, we get along great and are friends. I'll occasionally ask for a favor to have him do some universe-altering thing, no big deal, but most of the time he's content to hang out in the realm of the gods just learning about all the inventions that have happened since he created the universe. So I guess... All inventions. Well, that's really great to hear. But what about the people who choose to worship Arcus instead of you? Does that cause any issues? Well, I certainly would prefer they worship me, but I'm not going to get my tentacles in a knot about a few misguided humans. They are a dim-witted species, after all. That's definitely true. Can confirm. We work with one all the time, and it's a nightmare. You mentioned something interesting, though. The realm of the gods? I didn't know you guys had a realm. Ah, yes, we do. It's actually quite similar to the home of the gods you hear about in human mythology. The Greek gods have Mount Olympus, while we have Mount Ball-Olympus. <laughs> Mount Ball-Olympus? 
Like as in a Pokeball or something else? Ball Olympus sounds like a disease one would get in their berry pouch. I know, right? I've been trying to get them to change the name for months now. But Palkia, being the god of space, apparently means he is also the god of a certain space's name. And he refuses to change it. So who all lives in this Mount Ball Olympus? Well, first off, it houses the entire original Twitch Plays Pokemon team, along with the virtuous Pokemon who tragically fell along the way. To reward them for their efforts in reawakening me, I granted them all immortality after we were able to defeat the Pokemon League. Additionally, there are several legendary Pokemon that are on a high enough power level that they could be considered gods, so they often hang out there as well. So all the Pokemon gods just hang out there at times? Yes. Well, not all of them. There is one that isn't allowed there. Is it Giratina? What? No, we love him. His spinach puffs are incredible. Darkrai? He's not a god. He would be allowed there if he was, though. It's not like gods have to worry about nightmares since we don't sleep. No, the god who is strictly forbidden from entering the realm of the gods is Dome. Oh, man, I just got a cold chill when you said that. Oh, sorry, that was me. I've been trying to teach myself Ice Beam the last couple weeks, but all it's done so far is make my thoughts cold. Oh. Ew. But anyways, I suppose I should have realized that it would be Dome. He is your arch nemesis, after all. Indeed. He is the immortal embodiment of evil and chaos. I thought he represented democracy and you represented anarchy. In a silly game, I don't actually think the world should be plunged into anarchy. Come on. Wait, so was TPP a game or was it actual events? Now I'm even more confused. Dome wants nothing more than to usurp my throne and take control of the universe with a cruel and iron fist. Or... Claw. Or, actually, I'm not even really sure what those yellow legs are. Iron scythes, I guess, if he's in Kabutops form? Well, if he's not allowed to stay in the realm of the gods, where does he stay? When not roaming the mortal world, trying to corrupt unsuspecting people, he resides deep in the underworld, attempting to regain power and waiting for the day he once again attempts to defeat me. And that day is today. <laughs> Holy crap, he's here? Ooh, this is about to get spicy. I should have made popcorn. Dome. Vile dome. Of course you try to attack me when I'm most vulnerable. During a charitable action. Wait, charitable? We're paying you to be here. Your time of being in power is over. Red and the hive mind made the wrong decision all those years ago, and I'm going to prove it by crushing you. I will not allow you to throw this world into ruin. Bring it on! Ooh, actually, before you start, would it be possible for you guys to maybe take this outside? I'm pretty sure a battle of the gods wouldn't be very good for the interior. Ah, <sighs> you are stronger this time. Impressive. What did you do to improve? I ate lots of candy. Seriously, it's weird how in this world that's actually good for you. I see. Well, regardless, Dome, I'd like to take this opportunity to offer you mercy. If you give up now and return to the Underworld never to attack again, I promise not to destroy you. Never! No, not you! Are you alright, my lord? I apologize for my tardiness. Ah, Bird Jesus. All's well. You're right on time. Wait, hold on! Your actual name is Bird Jesus? Indeed. You're named after a real-life human religious figure? Oh, no. He's named after me. Well, that's gonna upset a lot of people. So using our pets is fair game, eh? Then allow me to bring in my own. Come forth, false prophet! Huh? What the... What's going on? Oh. Hey, Flareon. Bulbasaur? Squirtle? The Pokemon Talk Studio? How did I get here? You were summoned by Dome over there. Sup? Dome? I've never heard of you. Ooh, but have you heard of Lord Helix? Of course I have. Ha! Suck it, Dome! Wait, does this have something to do with Twitch Plays Pokemon? You know, this reminds me of that time that I was- Sorry about that. Seems I mistakenly summoned a false, false prophet. Did you just kill him? I mean, it wouldn't be a big deal if you did, since he's really annoying, but we should probably-
probably know just in case this raises any legal issues. No, I simply sent him back from where I summoned him from. I think it was the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Eh, good enough. No, I call forth my servant, the true false prophet! Isn't that an oxymoron? Flareon! How may I serve you, master? Destroy Helix and Bird Jesus. And when we're done with them, we'll start our world conquest by obliterating these two insects. We are very clearly not bug types. Helix, do you need backup? We can go mega if you want. No need. Bird Jesus has this handled. Attack! Uh. Why... why are you laughing? Huh, because, Dome, you've forgotten my primary commandment. Do unto others exactly what they just did to you. Mirror move! I banish you both to the underworld, where you shall be punished eternally. Ooh! I don't know yet. Do you have any suggestions? How about every single time they traverse through a cave, every single step starts a Zubat battle? Perfect! No! Bird Jesus, thank you for defending me once again. I'll see you for charades this evening. May your teammate's perception be impeccable, my lord. See you soon. Dome should be taken care of for quite some time. Unfortunately, his escape is inevitable, since he gains a bit of power every time someone picks the dome fossil over the helix, but thankfully, that's infrequent. My apologies for the craziness, friends. I hope that didn't ruin your episode. Absolutely not! This was extremely educational and entertaining. It was an honor and a privilege to have you here. You are too kind. But while I did enjoy myself, I'm afraid I must take my leave now. Oh, before you go, though, you mentioned playing charades, and that sounded fun! Can we play a quick game before you go? Sure, that'd be fine. All right, who am I? Hmm. Oh, I know. You're stupid. What? No, I'm dumb. What's the difference? Oh!